this video, we're gonna be taking a look at arguably the cheapest way to send large files online. So a little while back, I did a video on how to send really large files online using a tool or app or service called WeTransfer. So WeTransfer is a great tool. It's a great service. It's very simple and it's very easy to use. However, what a lot of people tend to run into with tools like WeTransfer or even things like Dropbox or a lot of the other large file storage services out there is that they can get pretty expensive, particularly when you're starting to add up all of the monthly costs when you have to factor in the subscription or the extra tiers that you have to go through in order to get enough storage for what you need. Not to mention the fact that with a lot of these services, Dropbox in particular, you have to pay for a max amount. So for example, if you're paying for two terabytes of space with something like Dropbox, it doesn't mean that you're actually using all two terabytes of space. So today what I wanted to do is show you a large storage solution that is pay as you go. So that way you're only paying for what you're using and not a penny more. Now, while this isn't quite as simple as something like WeTransfer or Dropbox, as you'll be able to see in this video, it's not quite as difficult as you might think. And so I'm gonna show you two tools that will help you upload to the service and then the service itself that actually hosts the files. And at the end, how to share those files no matter how big they are. Okay, so the first tool we're gonna to be looking at today is one called Cyberduck, and I will be leaving a link to all of the things that we cover in this video in the description. But the great thing is that this is available both on PC as well as for Mac, and it is totally free. Now you can donate, you can also buy this on the App Store if you want to support this developer, which I do recommend if you can, but if you can't or you're on a really tight budget, you can get this app for free. So we're just gonna go ahead and download this. Of course, I am on a Mac, but you can also get this on a Windows. Okay, so what I'm gonna recommend is a service by the name of Backblaze B2. I have done videos about them in the past. Out of all the storage service providers that I've seen, they appear to be among the cheapest. They've got a nice low price comparison here with other services. So you don't have to use Backblaze B2. However, that's what I recommend and that's what we're gonna be using in this particular video. So all you have to do is go through the process of signing up and creating your account. Once you're logged in, you're gonna go to the B2 Cloud Storage Buckets and you're going to create a new bucket. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is give it a unique name that is going to be URL friendly. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna call mine tmtv-demo and we're going to make sure that we make this public. Since we're going to be using this to share public files, not for just private storage of our files, we wanna make sure that this is set to public so that when we send links to people to download those files, they of course can access them. Default encryption, I'm gonna leave that disabled. Object lock, I'm gonna leave that disabled as well. And then I'm going to click create bucket. And once we've done that, we just want to click add a new application key. So I'm just gonna call this Cyberduck. And I wanna provide access to that specific bucket. I want this to be able to read and write and then we just click create new key. Once I've created this key, you'll see that it has given me a key ID, a name to go along with it, and an application key. These are all going to be important once we connect this Backblaze account to Cyberduck. So make sure that you go ahead and save all of this information in a secure location because particularly the application key will disappear after you leave this page. So key ID, we'll go ahead and grab that first. And again, make sure you're saving all of these things. And what we're gonna do in Cyberduck is we're gonna click open a new connection and we're gonna select from the dropdown Backblaze B2 and that's where we're going to paste in the key ID. Once we've pasted in the key ID, we then paste in the application key. Lastly, we just click connect. We'll then see that we're authenticated and it then shows our bucket that we created and we can now connect to it. Once we've done this, all we have to do is drag over any files that we wish to share. So you can add files of any size or variety and you will only be charged for the amount of space that you're using. Okay, so we see that my file has uploaded. So now all I have to do to share this is click, is right click on that particular file 
And then under copy URL, we just select HTTPS URL. Then if we were to open up a new incognito window, we would see that we can paste in the link that directly goes to our file. And this is the link that you would send around in your email or wherever you want to share this file. So as you can see, it's now downloading that individual file. Now, if you want to, you can create some more organization in here. I personally just have a bucket that is dedicated to all of my various shared files, and I just keep them all in the root directory of that bucket. However, if you want to, you can create new folders. So you can say for Tim, so if there's somebody named Tim you're working with and you wanna make sure you keep all the files that you share for Tim, particularly in that folder, you can do that as well. And then of course you can go in here and delete it. The great thing about this too, is you can actually go in here and because you are paying for the amount of space that you're using, you can go in every couple of months. And once you're done sharing particular files or files don't need to be publicly available anymore, you can just delete them and then you save on costs even further. So just as a side note here, you can use whatever FTP or uploading software that you want. There's others like Transmit that exist out there, a bunch of other applications that you can use other than Cyberduck. However, just from my personal experience, I found that Cyberduck is arguably the fastest, particularly in terms of upload speed. So for whatever that's worth. Okay, so I've uploaded a couple of other files here. And so one of the things you may notice, particularly if you're using my strategy of just throwing everything into the same directory or root directory, no folders or anything, is that it can get a little bit unwieldy. There's not a lot of organization in that. So what I do is when I'm in Cyberduck, I make sure that rather than sorting by file name, I sort by date modified. So I always have the newest file or the re most recently uploaded file showing up at the top. So I know if I need to go through and start deleting older files, I can see up here at the top, this is the newest file I've uploaded. Probably not ready to delete that yet. But what I can do is reverse that and I can see here's the oldest file. That file has been there for obviously just a few minutes in this case, but if it had been there for like three or four months, no longer does that person need to be able to download that file. I just go in here, I delete it. I've cleaned up my shared folder a little bit and I've also saved a little bit on storage. Okay, so that's pretty much it. A pretty quick tip for you guys today, but if you're looking to share larger files and you don't really want to go through the hassle or really the costs of some of the other services that are available, hopefully these pretty simple steps will help you get up and running quickly with sharing big files more affordably. As always, if you found this video useful, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you aren't already, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.